Breaking news. I have the new Apple iPhone 16 Pro and I'm testing it against the 15 to tell you if you should upgrade. I think Steve Jobs would absolutely hate this. Like, look at this side-by-side -side comparison. Do you see any reason to upgrade? But there are some situations where you will get significantly better image quality. I'll tell you all about it in just a second. First, I wanna thank our sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is better than social media. This is your permanent home on the web. I've had some of my Squarespace websites for more than a decade now. With my own custom domain name, with my own email addresses, I can take appointments from clients, I can sell products on my store, and when somebody buys something, that money goes to me because that's how stores should work. It hooks into my ship station so I can automatically ship things and print them with my label printer. Start at squarespace.com slash Tony. See how easy it is to get a real web presence. You're forever home on the internet. Try it completely free, no credit card required. And if you love it, the coupon code Tony will save you 10%. Thanks for sponsoring us for more than a decade now. Squarespace. Before I go through the image quality, I do want to talk about the camera control. This new much hyped button. Press it down and the camera pops up. That's convenient, but on my iPhone 15, I just did that with the action button. You can also press it to take pictures, but on other iPhones, you could just use the volume button to take pictures. So far, it's not really adding any functionality. What you can do is coax it into zooming just a little bit. Now, this allows me to zoom from like 0.5x to about 1.1 times i mean you can zoom further but you have to like pick your finger up and scroll further or like zoom really fast and kind of throw it i've had this for three or four days now and i gotta say i i do not use it to zoom it is just easier to pinch and pull to zoom it's much more precise steve jobs would absolutely hate this because it is not intuitive it does not work 100 percent of the time i think the camera control is a real failure and if you are going to use it with a case, the third-party cases have a cutout here that gives you access to the camera control. That actually makes it a little harder to reach. The actual Apple cases cost $50, but the control is actually integrated in there. On the other hand, I never actually scroll with it or use it for anything other than just a regular button. So I'm just going to stick with my third-party case because I have this cool little flippy thing that doesn't make the case that much thicker. Now let's get into the image quality. Starting with video, one of the new features is that it does 4K at 120 frames per second video, whereas with the iPhone 15, if you wanted to do four times slow motion, 120 frames per second, you had to drop to full HD. First of all, the first big difference is the iPhone 16 records slow motion in HDR video. Now, as I look at these two, I can see quite a bit more detail in the iPhone 16's 4K video, but it's also wildly over sharpened. To properly compare the detail, I need to take the iPhone 15's HD feed, add some sharpening and increase the brightness so it matches the HDR. But even now, the iPhone 16 clearly shows more detail in slow motion video. Let's check the main camera. It's the 24 millimeter equivalent. It's the one that comes up by default. I went out to the Chester Sunday market and just took dozens and dozens of side-by-side -side pictures of different scenarios. And, and really pixel peeping, I could not find any difference. Whether I shot raw, whether I shot heck, 12 or 24 megapixel files, I just could not see any difference. Looking at my catalog, about like 60% of my shots are taken with the main 24 millimeter lens, but about a third of my shots are taken with the ultra wide angle lens. And Apple did improve that. They switched out their standard 12 megapixel sensor with a 48 megapixel quad pixel sensor. Really, it's a 12 megapixel sensor where each pixel is divided into four subpixels that can be individually read out, but those four subpixels do not have color information. By default, it saves a 12 megapixel hex file, and if those are the settings you use, you will not see any additional detail. But you do have the option of tapping raw max in the upper right corner. And when you do that, it will produce a 48 megapixel file. Zooming in 800%, we can see the 48 megapixel raw files from the 16 do look significantly better. We can also see that Apple has changed the processing. On the 15, you can see massive over sharpening which is much more tamed down here. Let's look at some real world pictures. Looking again at these beats, as we zoom in, you can see definitely some more detail on the new 16. But the biggest value is that Apple's just toning down their processing. Like look at the texture on this beat here, the 
file in the 15 is so over sharpened that it looks kind of gross, but the 16's processing is much more natural. Nonetheless, as you look at the roots here, you do see more fine detail. So Apple is getting some extra detail out of that quad pixel arrangement. Maybe you saw the video I did recently where I took Apple's 48 megapixel files and showed that they only had about six megapixels of detail. Does this hold true with the super wide angle lens? Zoomed in 800%, that ultra wide angle lens still does not compare in any way to a real camera, but it is better than the iPhone 15 Pro Max so if you are thinking about upgrading, if you do use that wide angle lens, give it a shot. It might be worth it, but you have to use RAW. If you don't hit that RAW max button, then you aren't getting any benefit out of any of these lenses. And when you do hit RAW max, you're consuming a lot more storage space and you're giving up live photos. So in good light, real world, in studio environment, the 16 RAW files outperformed the 15 RAW files. But what about low light? Notice. 12 megapixels versus 48 megapixels. These results are really surprising. For whatever reason, the 15 Pro Max is much more readable in low light. Like I can clearly read America here on the older smartphone. On the newer smartphone, it's completely illegible. Apple broke something with the low light performance on the ultra wide angle lens. I did this test over and over again and I always got these results. The 15 outperforms the 16 in low light conditions. This is also true when shooting 12 megapixel heck files. The 12 megapixel heck files look significantly better on the 15 than they do on the 16 in low light conditions. I don't know why this is. It's clearly a flaw. If you're out at night in the narrow streets of a European city or something, you're going to use that ultra wide angle lens. And unfortunately right now, whether you shoot raw or heck, you're going to get worse results with a 16 than a 15. Finally, one last test, macro photography. The ultra wide angle 13 millimeter lens is used when you get really close to something. What Apple does is they crop way in on the 13 millimeter lens. So they're pulling from just the center of that small sensor, but it does let you get really close to things. And if I zoom way in here, it does look a little bit better on the 16 Pro. I wouldn't recommend upgrading for this purpose. By the way, I did all these tests many, many times. Studio, real world, just to make sure the results were consistent. I'm just picking a few sample pictures. In the comments down below, tell me what you think. Are you satisfied with it? Are you going to upgrade? Are you disappointed? Because I am. Like, the benefit from this is only for people who shoot 4K 120 or people who use the ultra wide angle lens in good light and they shoot raw. <laughs> Otherwise, there's no benefit. I mean, we do get one extra button, but it only really functions as a button. The slidey feature does not work worth a crap right now. So I did upgrade, but I'm a huge Apple nerd. It's not something I'm going to recommend to most people. Don't forget to check out our sponsor, Squarespace. They make amazing websites in, in just a few clicks. Start at squarespace.com slash Tony. Pick one of their gorgeous templates to start from, but then drag in your own content, make it your own, pick your fonts, your colors, add your pictures, your videos, whether you're promoting a personal project, a business, a portfolio, a video reel, Squarespace is by far the best way to do it. I've done it for more than 10 years. Squarespace.com slash Tony gets you started with a free trial. When you love it, the coupon code Tony will save you 10%. Thank you for sponsoring us all these years, Squarespace. Don't forget to subscribe for a tutorial of the new iPhone 16 Pro Max and iOS 18. Lots of camera reviews and photo news. Bye.